What's up guys, this is Share Talking, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, let's talk about Romance in Saga Universe and news. We just got the announcement of double summer banners. First of all, sorry about my voice, I'm not fully recovered, so still pretty bad. But I want to talk about what we have here. They announced it, double banners for summer, and one of them we already have the information about buffs. So we'll be discussing those in a few. And the first banner brings Bionet Professor and... Leslie, the second banner brings Summer, Liza, Coppelia and Candy. Well, alongside that we're gonna get a new event and this new event is nice because comes with uh, this Rocky that carries Tadum, the same buff that the latest version of Princess White Rose has access to. That buffs STR, Agility and Dexterity in a S version for free, alongside two other equipments. They are SS and 10 more points of HP cap for status. Nothing that changes too much. But I'm glad to see this welfare. I hope that it's just the same as JP. Now, uh, well, the first banner we already have information, like I said. We'll be going to Reddit and I post by his hands for a tree. We have the JP information compared to Global. Thank you so much for always doing this. The first video link is here. And as you can see, Professor got a buff to three different status, no penalties. And Professor has uh, the same mechanic as Mask. When it reaches overdrive, it will recover all surviving allies when attacking. That's good, but I don't think that Professor offers the same level of support to the party as Mask. But it starts with 12 BP. It also has a buff to on deck, starting on the start of a turn, and decreases damage taken by 30%. So it's kind of like a defensive passive that triggers every turn. And fired up 7, so we have some damage here. Uh, the first skill is a column, blunt and cold attack, which see power and 3 BP cost. You are just getting the extra range for the same cost as a normal 3 BP C power attack. The second one is Trilling Snipe. That you also find in the second version of Fuse. And the third one is a 12 BP attack with S power. And she can open with. It's a very strong attack. But nothing special. No additional effect. Hence why I'm saying that she does not bring the same level of support as Mask. Now the next one is Beauty. And she got very, very nice buffs. As you can see we lost STR. But it does not matter. She now has 90% endurance and will, so she takes the same amount of damage from magical and physical attacks. Intelligence was buffed to 118 alongside a very high agility, so we have 4 very high status, even 5 if you consider the charisma being high as well. And they changed some stuff like adding another damage reduction passive, she has a 25% reduction and then high protect tension decreasing by 30. So, minus 25, minus 30, and even more when we discuss the skills. She gets a OG gauge on the end of a turn, and when she attacks with OD, she will activate Rising Earth S+. Plus. This is an attack that it's full AoE, and gives her defense boost decreasing damage by 30% as well. Only when she uses Overdrive, then lasts for 2 turns. She will be getting in Overdrive between 2 or 3 turns, depending on how many attacks we receive in a boss fight. On the end of a turn, she recovers HP by around 200. And on the beginning of a Nod turn, that means 1, 3, 5 and beyond, she will also recover 2 BP. It's good because it triggers on turn 1, and then on turn 2 she already has that for uh, the second cycle. And on the beginning of an even turn, she gets Agility, Intelligence and Charisma buff by 15%. Good thing, it will affect her turn 2 damage. And on long fights, just like having mix it up effects, uh, 2 BP every 2 turns mean that on average she gets 4 BP per turn. And she still buffs her status like past versions. It's a combined setup. Uh, then skill number 1, it's a free skill that deals slash and pierce damage, critical against flowing enemies, it doesn't really matter, but grants herself guard up for free. And if this is used on overdrive, she will grant guard up small, decreasing damage by 12% to the party for two turns as well. So, uh, I don't understand much about this. This is a new type of mechanic from JP, uh, but no one wants to use a uh, E-Power attack on Overdrive, and especially for a very small effect like 12% damage reduction. So it's a cool idea, but in the end, no one wants to use. It's just here. The second one is a fast AoE attack with C-Power, 
well, for the cost, it's pretty good. And she can use twice in a row with slash and pierce damage. And grants an attack boost of 15% increasing damage to the party. That only translates into usually 5% increasing damage. And when using this as an OG attack, it will also apply defense down to the target. That will also translate into a 5% increase in damage and overall. That's good that it has two different ways to increase the damage, but then you have to use this on a boss fight on overdrive, and sometimes you just want to target one enemy, you are using a new attack, so I don't know how practical this actually is. But she is uh, more of the design of a healer. The third skill, it's just like Ring of Life, but better. Instead of using 8 PP, it uses 10. Still keeps the 2 LP cost, uh, recovers all surviving allies, but gives them 2 BP. So she gets 2 BP back to have the same cost as Ring of Life overall, while also getting 2 BP to the party. That can help in some situations, like it will allow you to heal uh, faster if you are bringing, for example, Rag Robin, uh, and you use her on a turn where Rag Robin cannot heal, then those two points may help get the next healing faster. Uh, or some characters that benefit from lots of BP, like Schuzer, who get more damage early on. Uh, this skill is interesting because the character is very, very defensive. She's not gonna die easily, so she can recover uh, two times at least. Uh, her future versions will have access to different types of healing and even buffs. So this is an investment right now that may not seem better than the current healers, but in the future it will be rewarding, but building as it is, it's not that special right now, it's just a very tanky healer with some skills that may increase damage, but does not offer boss support, we prefer usually defensive support than just offensive, and the guard up small is not as good as it seems. The last character is Leslie, and she got STR and Endurance buffs, because they were pretty bad to begin with, but she's a character with a lack of focus. She tries to have a status for everything, but nothing here stands out. She's a hybrid needed intelligence, so that's why she doesn't have very high STR. Well, the first passive, she has 37% chance to debuff agility of enemies by 20%, also 37% chance to get 2 EP when attacking. The second one is Action Switch. She's a character with double element attacks, slash and cold. When she attacks with slash, then she gets an attack boost of 10% increase in damage, reaching as much as 30% on the last turn. And then she recovers 2 BP. So she is essentially a 5 BP per turn character because uh, she will most likely be using slash attacks most of the time. And when she uses cold attacks, she generates herself a defense boost that decreases damage by 20%. It is stacks three times as well. So she becomes very defensive by turn 3, and she will also recover her own HP by around 170s. The last one is fired up 7, so she has a mix of damage and also damage reduction. Uh, skill number 1 is a single target attack with C power that has a chance to buff agility by up to 15%. And it carries both elements, that means that when she attacks with this, she saves 3 BP and gets all effects to trigger from the action switch passive. The second one is just cold, so it will not trigger the first part, but it's a column attack with 6 BP. You should compare this to a waterfall blade, well, it's uh, a power as well, but it carries a new effect that is to debuff agility by 20% on max level. If you really need to hit a column of enemies, this helps, but for farming, waterfall blade is still better because it also deals slash damage. The third one is a 9 BP double S power attack with slash and code, and this is her main gameplay to keep cycling between skill number 1 and skill number 3. This time it's fast and has a chance to buff agility from the enemy by up to 30%. So she can keep the buff agility and triggering her action switch to have offensive and defensive capabilities. She's not a nuker, her damage is not that in special, but if you really need agility debuffs, she works. It's just that we got so many agility debuffers recently and we don't have content for them since most bosses just use the fire weakness and debuffs are kinda useless most of the time. Well, those are the three characters, and I need to say that this banner is super skippable because the characters here don't bring anything really new to the table, with building being the biggest investment, but you will see better usage with the two future versions of her. She becomes a buffer, kinda like Gianna, 
and when you need a very big heal, you can just inherit uh, the heal spell. Or even better, this is the most defensive version, so you inherit the future buff into this version, keep buffing, and when you really need to heal, you use the skill number 3. So, the other two characters are not that important, so if you like building, it's okay to invest, but you may not see the real potential. Now, well, when we get new information about the second banner, I'll make a second video, but this video ends here. Now, what do you think? See here in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. If you want to support the channel, there are links in the description of the video. I hope to see you soon in the next one. Bye.